Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I join uh, Chief Davis in sending our condolences to all the victims' families and this uh, tragedy that happened across uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, on November 23rd, uh, 2021, uh, Harrisburg Police Department identified two uh, female victims that were found dead in an open lot in a commercial district of the city of Harrisburg. Anthony Robinson, age 35, was arrested um, as a result of video surveillance and cell phone records that connected him to two uh, victims. The first victim, as Chief Davis uh, mentioned, was Elizabeth Redmond, age 54, of Harrisonburg, and Tanita Lurie Smith, age 39, of Charlottesville. Harrisonburg Police Department in Charlottesville Police Department were conducting two separate missing persons investigations, which resulted in narrowing the focus to the search this open lot. Uh, both women were discovered within a short distance of each other uh, dead, um, although their deaths took place at two separate times. On November 30th, uh, 2020, a Metropolitan PT, PD contacted the Harrisonburg Major Crimes division and noted that the last known person that uh, a missing person that they were investigating had contact with Robinson. Um, it was a result of that information, um, HPD Major Crimes was able to determine that through cell phone records um, that contact took place in and around the area of the Moon Inn uh, in, uh, on Richmond Highway in Alexandria. Uh, then we received contact from Fairfax Police Department and Major O'Carroll's team contacted us. And so then we began this coordinated effort uh, to track down more victims, uh, unfortunately, that were at the hands of this shopping cart killer, uh, Mr. Robinson. So now I'd like to introduce Major O'Connor. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate that. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as introduced, I'm Major Ed O'Carroll. I have the pleasure of heading the Fairfax County Police Department's Major Crime Cyber and Forensics Bureau. Ten days ago, on December 7th, detectives from the Fairfax County Virginia Police Department received a call for uh, assistance from the Metropolitan Washington, D.C. Police Department uh, for help in locating a missing female. My team immediately pulled resources together to aid in the search. Detectives were informed uh, that Ms. Cheyenne Brown, 29, of Washington, D.C., took the metro from Washington, D.C. to the Huntington Metro stop on September 30th and never returned. Digital data showed that Ms. Brown was in the 6100 block of Richmond Highway, possibly at the Moon Inn on the night of her disappearance. Homicide detectives with assist assistance of a cadaver dog from the George Mason University Police Department, res responded to the Moon Inn in that immediate area and conducted a search. Unfortunately, we were unable to locate Ms. Brown or any evidence relevant to her whereabouts. Uh, my team traveled to Harrisonburg uh, to meet uh, the chief and her detective team and to gather additional intelligence about the link between Ms. Brown and our suspect, and the nexus to Fairfax County. Detectives from my homicide squad coordinated with the Metro Transit Police Department and actually located video surveillance of Ms. Brown at the Huntington Metro stop on September 30th. We authored a search warrant, executed for cellular data, and we received it immediately, confirming that Ms. Brown and the suspect were at the same location on September 30th, the night of her disappearance. Video surveillance confirms that the victim and the suspect were to get together in Washington, D.C. at the same metro stop on that fateful night. This past Wednesday morning, new information was provided that took my detectives back to the area of the Moon Inn to expand their original search. Wednesday afternoon, just two days ago on December 15th, homicide detectives found uh, what, what had caught their eye, which is in the uh, wooded area just off Route 1 
of um, uh, an item that uh, required a little bit more of investigative uh, research. Remembering that the victims in the Harrisonburg murders were transported by using a shopping cart, detectives observed a shopping cart in the wooded area not far from the Moon Inn. Besides the shopping cart was a lone container. When detectives looked inside uh, the lone container, their worst fears were confirmed. They observed what appeared to be human remains. We contacted the office of the medical examiner. They responded, along with an anthropologist from the George Mason University, Dr. Falsetti. And thank you to the doctor and the team. The initial analysis done on the scene confirmed what we thought. Likely, human remains were inside. Through a coordinated effort between the Fairfax County Police Department, Harrisonburg, the Metropolitan Police Department, detectives tentatively believe the remains discovered in the container are that of Miss Brown. As the Chief uh, mentioned, Chief Davis mentioned, the tentative identification is based upon a very distinct tattoo that Miss Brown had on her body. Uh, we are working with the Department of Forensic Science and further DNA testing to positively and scientifically confirm her identity. Sadly, these remains were not alone in the container. The remains of another unknown identified individual were discovered. Detectives have been working nonstop on this case since being notified of Miss Brown's disappearance in Fairfax County. We have determined that the suspect in custody in Harrisonburg was communicating with Miss Brown, utilizing a dating website. Detectives are hoping that further examination of, of these records that uh, we have and more that are coming will provide uh, additional information on who the second victim is. We have a lot of work to do. While the investigation, the multi-jurisdictional investigation is still young and we are in the early stages, detectives believe that the deaths were at the hand of the serial killer. The suspect, thankfully in custody at the Rockingham County, Virginia jail, and again, we believe him to be involved in the death of these two additional innocent victims. Special thanks to the detective team, the lead detective, Detective Young, her squad, uh, to our crime scene unit, all our staff, sworn and professional, and to our victim services, thank you. It's a team effort. There may be other victims in this case, and we are asking for anyone with additional information to come forward. Call the Fairfax County Police Department Major Crimes Bureau at 703-246-7800. Tips can also be submitted anonymously through our Crime Solvers Program. And that phone number is 1-866-411-TIPS. That's 1-866-411-TIPS. Again, anonymous tip, uh, tipsters can make that call, and uh, there is a reward program for information that leads to uh, charges. So my remarks in closing is, is not to the suspect, and it's not to my team. It's to the impacted families. I'm sorry. My deepest condolences. This police department, the Harrisonburg Police Department, all the agency mention, uh, mentioned, are absolutely committed. Justice will prevail and the offender will be held accountable for what he did and we haven't ruled out they, I'll use the plural ter term, maybe what they did and how he or they did it. Thank you. So, Sam, we have not positively identified the fourth victim, but we, um, we have leads 
that will hopefully, uh, in, in short order, help us identify this unidentified person. We do have leads on who it may be. The state of uh, decomposition was, was so bad uh, that it's going to take a little bit of work. But, but we have leads about uh, a missing person in particular in the area, last seen in the area, that we're following very closely. In this area? Uh, last seen in this area. Bruce. As I understand it, Ms. Brown was four months pregnant. Does Virginia law allow you to charge for the death of that woman? Yes, yeah, so I I've spoken with the Office of the Commonwealth Attorney. I've spoken with the Commonwealth Attorney. He's aware of this case. He was when it first uh, came uh, came to light. And then, uh, uh, you know, to our surprise uh, that we have, uh, have two victims, not one. Um, you know, that's, that's something that's part of the investigation. Um, and uh, we haven't ruled anything out on potential charges for the person or persons responsible for these deaths. As I said in my comments, and I'll, I'll emphasize them because they're important, justice will prevail. Uh, I'll ask Chief Warner to speak about the, the degree of cooperation. Um, you know, we certainly don't want to uh, compromise the integrity of, of Chief Warner's investigation or our pending uh, investigation, but I'll let the Chief address that. And DNA, forensic evidence, is always something that, that we're seeking. You know, as we mentioned, the state of decomposition for the two victims found here in Fairfax County was, was so bad that it's going to take a little while to get 100 percent certain identification, but we uh, have every reason to believe that Cheyenne Brown is one of the two uh, persons uh, in that container. And there's physical evidence as well that ties into the East End or the Elder Cajun? There's, there's certainly a, a mounting evidence that puts our killer right here in Fairfax County, just like he was placed right there in Harrisonburg. So, Chief, do you want to add to that? Did you? Regarding up here, yes, uh, to the, the physical evidence, we've, we're collecting f physical evidence. Of course, uh, to echo uh, Chief Davis, um, certainly we're collecting all of that for, for DNA, uh, and so we're going to hone in on that for, cer for certain. Uh, and regarding his uh, cooperation, he does have an attorney, uh, so we have not had a statement from him, so no. Yeah, again, I don't mean to punt back to back, but I'll ask uh, Chief Warner to describe some outreach that she has already had with, with Quantico. And, and then I'll reiterate, you know, we are going to engage in a very thorough retrospective examination. We're working backwards right now. So thankfully, uh, Anthony Robinson is in custody. Um, we, we believe he's responsible for these four deaths. But what else is he responsible for? Uh, we know that he's had addresses as far north as New York. Uh, to Prince George's County, to Washington, D.C., uh, and, and we know he's obviously traveled all the way down to Harrisonburg. But where else has he been? Where else has he laid his head? Where else has he worked? Uh, who does he know in all the jurisdictions in between? So it's going to be a, a, a real thoughtful, thorough effort uh, because we need to work, again, with the jurisdictions to see if any of their missing persons meets the profile that we're establishing here for our killer's profile uh, and, and MO and all those types of things. And a quick follow-up, uh, you mentioned that they were meeting at a hotel and have met uh, on, or different hotels and met on dating apps. Uh, do you believe that there's a sexual motive at all uh, where any of these victims uh, sexually abuse or uh, have sexual contact with their uh, abusers? Yeah, I, I don't know that with certainty, but again, that's something that we're obviously uh, exploring. Um, Chief, do you want to add to the earlier piece? Just that uh, we, you know, we are working backwards right now. That that's what we have to do. He's in custody now, and so that's what we have to take those steps to, just to go backwards, right? Because your question was working with with the federal government. Um, sure, they're they're helping us now. Um, the, the the main thing is that he is in custody, um, so they are assisting us in that investigation because they have a, a, a bigger web for us. So and to answer your question, then is yes. It sounds like the, the victims that you know of now. 
increasing over a period of weeks or months. Do you have any working theory as to how far back we're going to be looking? Could it be going back years and years or more recent or just don't know? Well, we really don't know. Again, we don't know. That's why we're asking for the public's help. Um, and we're scanning. This has gone out through all of our fusion centers. Uh, are, do you know of any other missing persons? We're trying to gather as much intel uh, as, as possible. I and mean, the chief said it best. We are working backwards. That's why uh, the major put it out. Do you know? Is there any more information? Please get it to us. It was a large plastic container, and like Major O'Carroll described, uh, adjacent to the container where we found the remains of our two victims was a shopping cart. So uh, probably not remarkable to serial killers going back many years in many other places across the country, uh, a remarkable absence of a criminal history, a remarkable absence. Um, so that's why we're going to need help from family, friends, associates, employers, neighbors, uh, anyone who can shed a little bit of light on, on Anthony Robinson's uh, profile. Uh, he's, I think he was pretty transient. I think he had many, many jobs over the years. Uh, but, but again, uh, that, that transient nature is going to, or has rather, prompted us to figure out where he's been over the last several years. And this, like you said, this could go back. Uh, you know, we're, we're going into this wide open. Uh, clear-minded, open eyes to see how far back and how many victims he may be responsible for the taking their lives. Yes, uh, absolutely. We, as I said, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, there's a lot of digital evidence in, in this case, uh, a lot of search warrants uh, that have and will be written. Uh, but let me just give you a, a, a time frame. Uh, an autopsy is underway today. Uh, this case is still active uh, to uncover the, you know, the you know the you know the two uh, two remains in the one container um, uh, has had as busy yesterday and today. It's a tragedy. You know, I see you kind of shaking your head, and I agree. This case has a shake in our head. Why? Because uh, uh, the victims did nothing wrong. Didn't have to happen. Uh, but justice will prevail. So we have a lot of work to do, and I do think from the video surveillance that we found, from the, the digital uh, um, uh, footprint that has been left uh, by uh, at least one of our victims and the suspect, uh, this case is falling together uh, to hold that offender accountable. Are you releasing some of that video evidence so the public can help in the case? So we have released uh, the suspect's or the arrestee's photo. Uh, and as the chief said, uh, when we did look at his criminal history, when we started doing our work up, uh, yeah, it was absent. Actually, the only thing that showed was the four charges in Harrisonburg, the two murders and the felony disposal of human remains. Uh, so we will locate every step that Mr. Robinson took because he interacted with, with people. We know he's killed some of them. Uh, there might have been some that escaped uh, or ran across him and have information. So we are working backwards. We've added additional team members from Fairfax, but this is a multi-jurisdictional case that will likely uh, take us even out of Virginia. No, we're not intending to release the video uh, right now. We're working with the families. We're trying to give them as much information because we're hours into this, uh, still in the double digits. of. of uh, so we're working with the families. Uh, if we find something that gives more light uh, to, to who Mr. Robinson is, and, uh, uh, but we want people to come forward that have run across him. Maybe they work with him. Maybe they met him on a social uh, media uh, type, type site. Uh, maybe they live down the street or they just ran into him at a grocery store. There are people uh, that have information, and we're asking uh, them to help us um, bring justice to these victims. Bruce, we're only going back a couple, two or three months. That's it. And that's what worries us. Uh, you know, he, he didn't suddenly turn into who he is three months ago. So that, that's why we're painstakingly going through his whereabouts, his relationships, his employment history, 
to, to figure out uh, if, in fact, there are other victims. And like Major O'Carroll said, he may have had interactions with, with women that he's met on these dating sites who have, uh, for whatever reason, um, know something about him. Uh, it didn't go that far, obviously, with them, but no doubt in my mind that these are not the only four women, uh, at least three, maybe four, that he's made contact with through his, his dating sites. There are, there are others, and we need to, to do our best uh, to identify them. We have not, but, but charges are forthcoming. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll say, you know, first and foremost, we, we have a premier school resource officer program. Our SROs are uh, part of a, a nationally renowned SRO program. So we're aware of all those bits of information that come in, and we act upon them swiftly uh, and judiciously. So it's something we always take very seriously, and we're taking it very seriously this time. Thank you. introduced to him through the dating app? Is that how he, or we, that we believe that the three are. Uh, obviously, we have not, we don't have a confirmed identity on the fourth one, so I can't speak to, to her. But again, the commonality is how do they meet dating sites? Uh, how are they killed? Trauma to the body. Uh, how are they transported to their final resting place? The shopping cart, hence shopping cart killer. And, and I don't want to give this guy a cape, but that's who he is. He's a killer. He's a serial killer. Uh, we know who he is. Thank God he's behind bars right now. But that still doesn't take away from the urgency that exists to identify any other victims that might be out here, literally beyond the Commonwealth of Virginia and, and up the East Coast. Thank you.